how do we graph inequalities? So y greater than or equal to x minus 2. How do you do it? So first off, we're going to graph the straight line, and then we're going to do the shading above it because it says greater. So that's how you know where the shading goes. But first off, let's graph the line. How do you, if you have an axis system, how do you graph, how do you graph? Do you remember anything about graphing straight lines? Remember, you can start with the, uh, the number that's out here. This number start, and um, let me write it a little different. So right here. So you start with this guy, and if it's positive, it's up on the middle line. And if it's negative, it's down in the middle. So in other words, negative 2 means down. So I go down 1, 2, right there, negative 2. There's the first dot. I only need two dots, so I'm halfway there. So whatever number is off to the right like that, that's your starting point. That's your first dot. So down 2. There's my first dot. Now, to find the second dot, anybody know? What do you do? Plug in. You could plug in. Do you remember the slope thing? I guess lose a rise over on. Yeah, exactly. Remember that kind of thing? You could just look at, at whatever's in front of X. What's in front of X? Nothing. We just say 1 over 1. It's an invisible 1 because 1 times X is the same as X, huh? There's like an invisible one in front of x. Make it 1 over 1 because we need a fraction. We need a rise and a run. So that's my rise and run. Remember that from algebra? Graph in straight lines. And so that means from the negative 2 dot, you know, starting from that one, that first dot, go up 1 over 1, and there will be a second dot. And then once you got your two dots, you just connect your two dots. And you got your straight line. Does that make sense? So whatever number's off to the right, that's your starting dot, down two in the middle. And then whatever fraction is in front of x, that's your rise and your run up and over to get from your first dot to your second dot, up one over one. And now connect the two dots. We got the line. Now, do we shade? How do you know if you shade above the line or below the line? Well, that's all about that's all about whatever it says with about y. Y greater, huh? Y is on the wide mouth side, right? The inequality symbol. It has a it has a wide side. When you write a symbol like this, it has a wide side and a narrow, you know, it has a greater side and a lesser side. So greater and lesser. So whatever is on the wide mouth side is the bigger one. Whatever is on the narrow side is the smaller. So what does it say? Y is greater. So greater stuff is above the line. Does that make sense that that's above it, not below it? Sometimes I've had students ask a good question in the past. They've said, Mr. Aaron, to the right is greater. To the right is greater. Why did you shade there? It said greater. Greater's to the right. What's wrong about that statement? It's asking for y. Yeah. The, I, I, my response to them is don't say right and don't say left. Right and left are x ideas. The x-axis goes right and left. What do we have alone? Y. So don't think right, left. Think up, down. So if you're thinking up, down, which is Y, what's greater? Up. So that's why this is greater because it's above the line. Does that make sense? So don't confuse yourself and start thinking right, left. That, um, that, because we have Y alone, not X. You can actually do a whole method where you got X alone, then you do right, left, and blah, blah, blah. But we're getting Y alone. So since we're getting Y alone, all of your thinking is up, down. So that's the part up, huh? That's the part above. That's where the Y axis goes up, 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 right? The Y axis goes up there. So that's it. That's my answer. That's the shade. Let me show you how to do it on the actual math Excel. It's really easy. Okay, so this one's a little different. Let me, let me write it out where you can see it a little bit better. For X plus 4y, less than or equal to 16. Okay. This one's different. We're going to have to do something different. Why? What's, what's fundamentally different about this one? you got to get y alone. got to get y alone. Yeah, the last one, y was already alone. That was super convenient. This one, y is not alone. So the first step for graphing, if you're going to graph something, first get y alone. Yeah, whenever you graph, you got to first get y alone. All right. Can you do that? 
the, here's the greater than, less than statement. Can you get y alone there? You good at solving? Let me grab the 4x. Whoops, I just kind of marked up everything there. So I'm going to grab the 4x and jump it to the other side. So I'll have 4y less than or equal to negative 4x plus 16. We good so far? When, uh, whenever something jumps to the other side, it changes its sign, huh? So that 4x jumped over became a negative 4x. What's the last step to get y alone? Divide by that 4, huh? So let's do that. Divide 3 by 4. So we get y less than or equal to, now that'll be minus 1x plus 4. Is that okay what I did there? Did y'all see that? 4 divided by 4 is 1, and 16 divided by 4 is 4. Good? Okay. So now, can you graph it? Go ahead and make a little graph for yourself. Over here on the side or whatever. Can you do a quick little graph? Let me give you a second, now that we've got y load. Do the graph, find the two dots. Connect the dots, make a line, and then shade one side or the other. On that. Give you a second on that. All right, so where do we start? Start it. And that's a plus 4, so that'll be up 4, won't it? If it was negative, it'd be down. That's up. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Boom. There's my first dotted up 4. Good. And now how do I find my second dot? Well, you got you to gotta make this a fraction. It's negative 1 over 1, isn't it? There's only one negative sign. Why? Why isn't there not 2? Well, why can't you say, no, Mr. Hunt, it's negative 1 over negative 1. That's not true. Why? It's not just my opinion or declaration that's factually inaccurate. Why? Why can't it be two negatives? Because what is two negatives? Positive. And it was never positive, was it? It was negative all along. So um, only one negative sign. So therefore, just make it negative 1 over positive 1. This is the rise over the run. I usually put the negatives on the top of the fraction. You could make it work either way, but let's just put it on the top. So negative 1 over positive 1. Okay, so starting from the dot at 4, starting right here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> to rise negative 1. How do you rise negative 1? Go down 1 and then over 1. Boom, right there. Down 1 over 1. Connect the dots. So it's a line that goes down, huh? Negative slope goes down, doesn't it? You see what I did? I started it up 4 and went down 1 over 1 because the slope, negative 1, is you, you make it look like a fraction. If it's not a fraction, you put it over 1 because that's the same thing, right? Negative 1 over one, positive 1 is the same thing as negative 1. Down 1 over 1. Down 1 over 1. By the way, even if you left it negative 4 over 4, it'd still work, right? See what would have happened? I would have went down 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1, 2, 3, 4. Would have got that dot. Those two dots make the same line, don't they? You can do whatever you want. As long as you have a true slope, as long as the fraction here is equal to the fraction there, the two dots will be the same line in the end. Is that making sense? I'm not seeing any nodding. I'm just seeing straight looking. I normally nod or I go, hmm. I'm, you know. It helped me. I'll know whether to speed up or slow down. Say it again or move along. All right, so there's our line now. Do we shade above it or do we shade below it? We shade, yeah, this one is shaded, what does it say? Y less. You always go to the Y. Y less, less stuff is below, underneath the line, like that. Good? On that, all is well? Shall we move on? Questions? Okay. Remember, from algebra. Did you like your algebra classes that you took? Were they your favorite classes? I know they were Joel's favorite classes, huh, Joel? Because he took me for algebra, so I'm sure that's it's one of them. My high school teacher retired midway through the semester, so. Oh. Never you just that. wrecked him, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, try that one. There's a trick coming. See if you remember it. 
we so. never got a teacher after that. So. Never got a teacher? How do you have a class without a teacher? The security guard. Are you kidding me? <laughs> they just guarded the room, huh? Yeah, just in there, just in there, that's it. He just sat in that room. Wow. Tax dollars, hard at work. So solve for Y, gotta get Y alone. All right, let me jump in and help you. So first step is you got to get that 2x to jump up. So grab that 2x, jump over here. So that would be minus y less than minus 2x plus 8. So far, so good? Remember, any sign in front of anybody, that's their baby. That's their sign, right? So that minus that's in front of the y, that's his. It just stays on him. The 2x has nothing in the front of him, so when he jumps, so that means he's positive, but when he jumps the other side, he becomes negative. Good so far? Okay, now, is y alone? Not quite. It's got that minus sign, so how do we get rid of that minus? That's a minus 1, isn't it? So how do we get rid of it? We divide by minus 1. Okay, so I divide. Now, when you divide, do you, do you all know that you do all three of them? You divide the whole right side, every term, and the left side, right? The two negatives over here, what's two negatives? Positive. That gets us positive y, regular, alone y, which is what we want to get y alone. And what else happens? What's that? Oh, yeah, minus, yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, these two, there's two negatives here, so that's going to be positive. And here's a positive and negative, which is minus 8, true. And you flip the sign. That's the extra wrinkle. Do you remember that one? The security guard got that clear, huh? <laughs> Good. Good security guard. All right. Well, I, yeah, you got to flip the symbol, so let me write a note about that in case you're a little rusty on that one. So when you divide... By, well, divide or multiply, really. We never, we don't really ever do that, though, but it's true. Divide or multiply. By a negative, flip the symbol. Yeah. So, so when, when you put a negative under the bar, that's what I'm saying. When you put a negative under the bar, when you divide by a negative, you've got to flip the symbol. See how it went the other way? All right, there we go. Can you graph that thing now? Well, I guess it's right there, isn't it? We're looking at it. Right? So, here, I'll, I'll do it just to be thorough. So, we, where do we start? Yeah, right. Start down 8. Negative 8, huh? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Right there. Start eight. There's our first dot, negative 8. And then how do we get to our second dot? 2 over 1. Yeah, you make that look like a fraction. Rise over run. So go up two, one, two, over one. There it is, up two over one. Play connect the dots. There's our line. Do we a shade? Now, again, it's really tempting on one that's almost straight up and down like that to think right, left, but don't think right, left. Remember, we got Y alone. All of our thinking has to be above or below. Y is up, down, not right, left. Huh? So above or below, what does it say? What does it say right here? Y is... Greater. Greater is above, isn't it? Which side's above? Here's the y-axis. Which side is the positive y-axis? This side. Isn't it? See how the y, the positive, the y that goes up, 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 up is on the left side, isn't it? That's the above of that line. Right? Because it's turned a little bit this way, so above is that way. There it is. Questions on that? Oh, actually, there's a dotted line. I don't know if you notice, there's a dotted line. Why is there a dotted line? Yeah, do you remember that if you don't have the equals? Yeah, there's no equals. Um, so if, if it's that or that, then it's dotted line. Yeah, the, um, and then if it's, uh, if you have, well, I'm running out of room here. If you, have, if you have the bar, then that's a solid line. Yeah, so if you, if you have the bar, greater than or equal, less than or equal, either way, if you have the equals on the bottom, that's a solid line, whereas if you have, you don't have the equals on the bottom, that's a dotted. Why? Well, because the equal stuff is the stuff right on the line. So if you're saying, I want the stuff greater or equal, then you want the stuff on the line. But, if you're, but this one, they're not. They're saying, we only want the stuff greater. Don't give me the stuff equal. Right? So don't give me the line. So that's why we have to actually dot this line. This will be 
a dotted line. Because we're saying the answer is not the line itself. It's just the stuff above the line. Does that make sense? There's, there's three regions up there. There's stuff greater than the line, there's stuff less than the line, and there's stuff right on the line, which is equal to the line. So they're asking us just to give them the greater, just the stuff above the line, not the stuff right on the line. So dot the line, I'm saying the not line's not included. Other questions on that one? All right, so <coughs> why less than nine? Look, look at that. What's, what's missing? Yeah. X. There's no X. So that, that's, easy. that's just easy. Just put a, put a gray. It's going to be straight. Huh? It's going to be straight this way or straight that way, straight up, straight sideways or straight up and down. How do you know which one? Well, just go through the Y axis at nine. So first off, just do that. Y axis, where's that? It's right here. Isn't isn't that nine? Would it be dotted? Oh, yeah, it's dotted, huh? Yep, yep, yep. So first off, I find nine. Here's the y-axis, and I find nine, which is right there. And I got to shoot through y is nine, dotted. You're right. I forgot there's no equals bar on this one, right? No solid bar, no solid line. Dotted. Okay, now, am I going to shade above that line? So that's, done. that's all I got to do for graphing. Now I just got to decide if I shade above or below. What, is it, what does it say here? Why is less, lesser stuff is below, shade below. See how easy that is? You just put any two dots that are up nine. And you could go like this dot and that dot. It doesn't really matter. Just any two dots that are up. You don't have to do the one right here. Any two dots, because all the dots are up nine. All the points on the line are up nine. That making sense? Because that's all it has. So you just hit the y-axis at 9. <coughs> Shade below. Dotted line. So. Okay. So. I like that color. So let's try that one. Can you graph that one? Let's see what you can do. So uh, it's only got one letter, so just hit the x-axis at negative 5, huh? So here's the x-axis. I'm going to make a little bigger one. I'm going to hit this is the x-axis, this is the y, the x is the sideways. Let's hit that negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right there. So solid line or dotted? Solid bar, solid line. We want the equal stuff. So I'm going to go through the x-axis at negative 5. So this one's actually a vertical line, isn't it? Because this one has to hit the x-axis at negative 5. Um, solid line. Now, i got to decide which side to shade. This is the one and the only time we do indeed think right-left. We don't think up-down because we don't have a y. We only have x. You tracking with me? All we have there is x. So if all we have is x, we've got to think right or left. It's What does this say? X is... Less. We're reading that symbol okay? Right? That symbol's on the narrow side. X is on the, I'm sorry, the X is on the narrow side of that symbol. Right? There's the narrow side and the wide mouth side, right? X is less. So where are the lesser X numbers? Think about these. This is negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Right? Over here is... If you go this way, negative 6, negative 7, negative 8. Where are the lesser x numbers? To the left. Those are more negative. They're less. They're, if that's your bank account, you're more in debt, right? That's worse off. Good on that? So shade to the left. Questions I can answer? I'm taking it all in. Is it all good?
Okay, so... Try that one. <clears throat> Can you graph it? What's first step on this one? Gotta get y alone, right? Gotta get y by itself. Whenever there is a y, we have to get y alone. So, divide by 6. By six, get y alone. Let's see if you can graph it then. Okay, so divide by 6 on both sides. It's alone. So y... So we get that? Good so far? Everybody okay? Now, how do we graph this? It's kind of weird looking. <clears throat> how do we graph that? Well, where do, where do we start? Where's our starting dot? Zero. Good, because there's nothing off to the right, so it's like there's a plus 0 there. Right? Because that wouldn't change anything, right? Adding 0 doesn't change anything. It's like it's really there without showing up. Right? So that's, that's where I start. So that's right in the middle. That's the origin, isn't it? We start right in the middle on that one. Everybody tracking with me on that? Okay. Now, where do we go from there to march off the slope? There's an invisible one on the top, huh? So that's rise over run. So from the middle, you go up one and over one, two, three, four, five, six. Way over. Up one over six. And then you connect the dots. Solid line or dotted? Solid line or dotted? Dotted, right? No solid bar, no solid line. Dot that line. It's a dotted line. Because it's not equal. We don't want the equal. We don't want the line. We just want above or below. Okay. Good so far? Up one over six. Dot starts the origin, then up one over six. Okay, now which side do we shade? Let me let you do that. Let me give you a second. Look at Y. It has, all you need to look at is right there. It's all about Y and what it's saying about Y. Which side of this symbol is Y on? Is he getting the wide mouth or is he getting the narrow side? He's getting the narrow side. So that says Y is less. So that's down below. Does that make sense? I say that because I've had students in the past tell me, Mr. Aaron, when the symbol is this way, it always means greater. Well, no. You can't make a statement like that. It depends which side the thing is on that you're focused on, right? The same symbol, if you put Y in that side, yeah, that's greater. Same symbol if you put Y in that side, but well, now Y is less, right? So it depends where the Y is, doesn't it? If Y is on the narrow side, that's less. If Y is on the wide side, that's more. Questions I can answer on that? Is that making sense? That one? Shade below. All good? All right. Final answer is where the two shadings overlap. So where the two shadings overlap. Okay. So we have x plus y less than or equal to 1. And then the other equation, I'll put it over here, is x, we're here, I'm going to put it side by side, x minus y less than or equal to 5. Okay. So we got both those equations. So go ahead and take them one at a time. Get y alone. Got to get y alone for each of them, and then graph both of them. Do the two shadings and find where the two shadings overlap. That's what you want. That's the answer to the system.
So I did the first one and got y alone. Now I'll do the second one and get y alone. Everybody get here? See on the second one, how I, how I took the x, I jumped it to this, I became a negative x, right, when things jump to this side. Then I'm getting well and divide by negative one, and what do I have to do when I put negative number <coughs> under the bar? Switch the symbol. So the symbol has got to go the other way, doesn't it? So this will be y greater than or equal to, and now be careful with the signs on the other side, right here, two negatives, positive x, one positive, one negative, negative 5. It's all well with that kind of stuff. Okay. Let's take it from there. I'm going to start the red one at up 1. It's so up 1. There's my first dot. And then I got to do the slope. So the slope, remember you put 1 over 1 when there's nothing else in front of x. There's nothing else in front of x, you just put 1 over 1, which is the same as 1. 1 times x is the same as x. But it's negative. They had a negative in front, so it's negative 1 over 1. That's rise over run. So that means you go down 1 over 1. There's the, there's the red one. Everybody good so far? Everybody see how I got that? So you started up one, down one over one. Two dots. Connect them. There's a line. Which side, which side do we shade of that line? What does it say? Y is less. So you're going to shade below it. Good. Now, is that okay? Any questions to that point? Now let's do the other one. The purple one. Where do we start the purple one? Yeah, start. Down five. One, two... Three, four, five. Right there at negative five. And then where do we go from there? What's in front? One over one. It's rise over run. Go up one over one. And then connect the dots. Make this one go a little further. Connect the dots, make a line. Now, where are we supposed to shade? Is that, is that okay so far? So I started at down five, went up one over one, connect the dots. These are all solid lines. We have the solid bar, solid line. So do I shade above or below the purple one? Let's just say Y is greater, above. So I'm going to shade above the purple one. So where do the two shadings overlap? Right here. Overlap. That's where the two shadings overlap, huh? That's our answer. How did you enter that? Yeah, you tap just that area. Yeah. I'll show in just seconds. Everybody everybody getting that? I'm gonna see what happened there. Questions I can answer. So here I'll go back. So the red let me see let me the red one starts up one and it goes down one and one. 
other one's negative 5. Okay, let's try that one. Can you read that one? So the first one is 2x plus 4y greater than or equal to 8. The second one, 4x minus 2y less than or equal to 8. Okay. So try, try those two. Get y alone in both cases. Graph them both. Remember, if you divide by a negative, you've got to flip the symbol, right? Jump two x over. Reduce all fractions. <laughs> See how I reduce the fractions there? Right? 2 divided by 4 becomes a half. 2 fourths is a half. And the 8 divided by 4 is 2. Are we good there? And there's that one. And the other one, same thing. So when I divide through by negative on this one in the purple, the second one, I've got to flip the symbol, don't I? Because I'm dividing by a negative. So flip the symbol. Good. 4 divided by 2 is 2, and 8 divided by 2 is 4. They're both negative. Oh, and the first one's positive, isn't it? Yes. Positive because it's two negatives, huh? Let's just testing you, right? But. So there we go. We got our two equations. You put them both on the graph now. So start this one up to. One, two, the red one there. And then rise over run. So it's going to go down one over two. So there's the red one. And we're going to shade. So started it up two. <clears throat> down one over two. Do we shade above it or below it? Y is greater, so we shade above. Let's do the other one. We start 
a down four. And then go two over one, rise or run. Up two <clears throat> over one, like that. Connect the dots. It's getting easy. Which side of the purple do we shade? Above it or below it? Why greater? Above. So we shade above the purple. So where's the overlap? overlaps up here, isn't it? And so there we go. I think we're about done. Maybe one more in this section, we'll move on. Questions on that one? Can I move on? You got it all down? All right. Is easy to deal with. Let me show you. So, um, okay. So, we have two... Two equations at the beginning, two, two main equations. First one, x plus 3y less than or equal to 12. Second one, 3x plus y. They're very similar, aren't they? Less than or equal to 12. Okay. Now, what about that xy greater than or equal to 0 thing? That means just the first quadrant. I'll show you in a second. That just means the upper right. That's what that says. I'll, I'll show you in a minute. Let's just finish these up. So, Get y alone, get y alone, both cases. Get y alone, same kind of thing. Do your two dots, form your lines, do your shading. And then I'll show you about those last two conditions. It means just limit yourself to the first quadrant, upper right-hand corner, because that's where x and y are greater than or equal to zero. That's what that's saying. All these guys are saying is first quadrant only. Why? Because where's x greater than or equal to 0? Here. Aren't these all the positive x values? And where's y greater than or equal to 0? Isn't it right here? Aren't these all the positive y values? So where are they both greater than or equal to 0? That first quadrant, huh? Upper right-hand corner. See what they're saying? You don't have to do, you don't have to make lines for them or anything. Just know, oh, they're saying limit yourself to the first quadrant. Well, I guess, I guess technically you do have to make lines. Math Excel is going to make us. But, you know, like when you take this on the test, the third exam, it's multiple choice. Just grab the one that only goes in the upper right-hand corner. You know, that's what it means. What if the signs are switched? Uh, they won't do that. They won't give those other two switched. But if they did say x less than 0, that would be the left side, right? Isn't this where x is less than 0? Or y less than 0 would be down. Yeah, but they're not going to do that. All right, so let's get y alone. So just jump the x over. 3y less than or equal to negative x plus 12. And then divide by 3. Y less than or equal to minus x over 3 plus 4. Like that. So I got y alone in that one, and then get y alone in the other one. Jump the whole 3x over. That one's done. Y's alone, just like that. And all right, put them both on the graph. So the red one's going to start it up 4. Tear it up four. All right, starts. That number, am I going too quick? That number off to the right where you start? And then rise over run. This is um, negative one over three. This is rise over run. So I go down one over one, two, three. Everybody tracking with me there? 
down 1 over 3. Connect the dots. Where do we shade for that thing? Above it or below it? <coughs> Where do we shade? Yeah, Y less below. So we shade below. And then the other one, the purple one, where do we start on the purple one? We start at 12. Way up at 12. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Way up at 12. And you go down 3 over 1. This is rise over run. So down 1, 2, 3 over 1 like that. And connect the dots. Down three over one, like so. Right, so, but up 12. Down three over one. And then we have Y is less, less, shade below. Which, which way is below? Well, this, this is below, isn't it? That's, that's because that's the, where the Y axis goes down. It's below that line. So where do the two shadings overlap? Well, down here, all this, but the third and fourth conditions, x and y greater than or equal to zero, say only give me the first quadrant, please. So that means we say, oh, okay, we're only going to give this section here. Right there. Because we, we, we have to be upper right-hand corner, first quadrant only, because this says only x values greater than, only from here over, x greater than or equal to zero. And y greater than or equal to zero means only y here and up, huh? So that limits you to that first quadrant section right there. That's what we're going to do here in just a minute in the next section. That's what it's really all about, is these kind, just like this. You'll get a little, that's like a little shape, isn't it? It's got one, two, three, four sides. It's a quadrilateral, if you remember the name, whatever. It's a four-sided shape. We're going to basically take those four-sided shapes here in about five minutes, and then we're going to find the four corners. This corner is easy, zero, zero. But then we're going to have to do a little work to find this. Well, that was up four. That was easy. But this one's a little harder. It's where the two lines intersect. We'll have to find where they intersect. And then this little dot right here. Find those four corners, and we're going to plug them into something called the, well, plug into them, something called the objective function. No, plug them into the objective function. And find the one that's biggest or the one that's smallest, depending on whether they want a max or a min. That's where we're going. That's why this is just like the tool to do that job. It's like we've learned how to use a wrench well, and now they're saying, now build something with it. That's the next section. So we're getting good at this. Is that good? Remember how to graph inequalities, greater than, less than, all those little rules? Finding shapes. Other ones. Some kind of funny word problem. A lot of words. Company produces handmade shawls and Afghan, Afghans. They spin the yarn, dye it, weave it. Shawl makes, of course, one hour spinning, one dying. The Afghan requires bum, bum, bum. Seven hours available each day, spinning. Eight for dyeing, 12 for weaving. So I see the table, write a system, graph the feasible region. Yeah. <clears throat> so. Okay, so I guess you just fill in the information that they're saying. It's saying, um, okay, so for the shawls, hours of spinning. A shawl requires one hour, so that's a one. One hour of dyeing, one. And one hour of weaving, one. Afghan is one, two, four. One, two, four. That wasn't bad. What's next? Okay, one, one, one. Yeah, it's a bad question. They just... Solved it funny, set up funny. Yeah, remember I suggested you always put the variables at the top? They put them on the side. That makes it weird because that means this is my equation now. Because it's 1x, 1y. That's, that's what needs to go in this box right here is 1x plus 1y is less than or equal to 7. And then this is 1x plus 2y. Less than or equal to 8. And this is 1x plus 4y. See, it makes it go vertical. Instead of horizontal, can you read that? Do you see what I'm doing there? That's, that's how you yeah, do it. It's, it's, better, it's better to put the variables on the top, so the side, like they're doing it, just makes it a little weird. That's it. That's all you got to do for that.
got that down. 